all right that's good that's good so i feel like these days a lot of people take the term tendinopathy and tendinitis without really kind of knowing what it actually means i was asking back in uni um if one of my mates wanted to go on a run with me and this is how we responded a run today a run today no 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 i got i got tendinitis i got tendinitis Tendon Nidus I can't run It's not how it really works You feel? So today we're going to be exploring tendinopathies just so you know I can educate you guys so that you'll be able to follow simple concepts in like an academic journal. I don't know, I don't know. But we'll aim for that, right? So can anyone tell me what tendinopathy is? How about me, Sensei? Tendinopathy is an umbrella term for a bunch of tendon pathologies. The first one we have is tendinitis and that's inflammation within set parts of the tendon are most frequently seen in patients with rheumatoid conditions. And, and we usually say tendinitis, but we usually mean tendinosis. Um, and tendinosis is actually a degenerative condition of the tendon due to overload. So it's important not to get these two terms mixed up because tendinosis does not have any inflammatory factors related to it. And that has been proven by its absence of key prostaglandins, key inflammatory markers such as PGE2. You then have peritendinitis or tenosynovitis, which is the inflammation of the synovial sheath that the tendon runs through itself, um, such as the quirk veins. Um, the tendon in this case is still not inflamed. And finally, you have bursitis, which is inflammation of the bursa. Um, this can come secondary to an underlying uh, tendon pathology or potentially trauma. So now that we know our terms, let's try and uh, discuss the structure of a tendon itself. So tendons store and release elastic energy um, and they function as the bridge between muscle and bone. So there are two main proteins within a tendon that make up a tendon, one being proteoglycans and the second one being type 1 collagen. So proteoglycans are responsible for the viscoelastic nature of tendons. So what this means is that at low level strain, your tendon actually facilitates to dissipate energy rather than transfer tensile force. Whilst at high volume activities, your proteoglycans actually serve to transmit tensile force rather than dissipate energy. And that makes all the difference between walking and running. Type 1 collagen is just generally responsible for the tensile strength of a tendon. So now we're going to be talking about Cook and Purdom's continuum of tendon pathology. So in a healthy continuum, and this is called the reactive stage, like any muscle, tendons, when you go sprinting, when you go to the gym, when you do you know, your squats or whatever, that stresses your patella tendon. And I'm just using patella tendon as a general example. You're actually compressing the proteins within that tendon. And with compressed proteins, it encourages protein production. And what happens now is with relative rest, you get an increase in type 1 collagen fibers and essentially you get a stronger tendon. In an unhealthy continuum, and this is when you exercise, you're like a gym junkie, a brolly, I don't know. This is when you, you start pushing your tendon to a stage of tendon disrepair and you keep on working out that tendon without giving it adequate time to rest. So essentially what happens here is that you keep on pushing for protein production until you get to a point where there is protein separation within your tendon matrix. Oh, that was a good take, I burped. This is gonna be easier if I actually give you analogies. So, let's see. I think you're truly so, imagine if this is your tendon. Now your tendon is, or it doesn't have this purple thing, 
but all your collagen 1 fibers actually run parallel to each other and that gives you maximum efficiency to actually transmit your tensile forces and your whatever volume of work you're doing with that tendon and what happens when you keep on training and training and training your tendon actually starts to look like Do you know what this looks like? Oh, but if I open it, then I have to eat it. Stop it. This is kind of what it looks like when you keep on bringing it to tendon disrepair. So your tendons start to... Start, start to this. It starts to... You feel? So you actually get it build up of type 3 collagen fibers. So type 3 collagen fibers are there for reinforcing structural framework rather than facilitating tensile force transmission. And one last thing is if you look really closely in the holes of the noodles, you also get a substance called ground substance. And what this is, is it's just a gel-like substance that doesn't actually facilitate for any tensile force transmission. It just fills up space. It literally fills up space and it's pretty much non-functional. diagram sucks and let's say you keep on training uh, despite pain and you keep on pushing through that pain you end up in a stage called degenerative tendinopathy and this stage is characterized by cell death trauma tenocyte exhaustion and overall collagen disarray your tendon gradually gets more and more acellular which decreases its potential to heal by itself and also you get massive focal thickening. So you get, you get instead of one block of this, imagine if I had another block of this and it just gets fatter. Just because you're increasing production of type three collagen, which, you know, again, doesn't help with tensile forces. In a sense, it looks like it's stronger, but in fact, it's weaker. <laughs> This new form has a weakness. You also get vascularization, but this is vascularization through new near vessels. Now tendinopathies hurt. They it feels like a sharp, sharp pain. Every time you stand up, pain. Every time I did a squat, pain in my knee, and very stiff in the morning, very stiff after resting and then just bending my knee once. Now you might be asking why why does tendinosis or tendinopathy hurt so much if it doesn't have any association with your normal inflammatory cascade or key prostaglandins or key inflammatory markers and this is due to a couple of reasons. The first one is thinly dispersed afferent fibers so your tendon is actually filled with a lot of mechanoreceptors and a lot of afferent fibers and upon any compression it's just going to send a signal from your knee straight up to your brain another one is your near vessels increasing near vessels and what that does is that it doesn't actually count as your general vascularization it doesn't have the healing potentials as blood but that being said it does encourage sympathetic nerve ingrowth and generally that will increase the intensity of your pain signal. Lastly, you have neogenic inflammation and this includes your substance P, glutamate and CGRP. And basically, what this means, long story short, I don't know, science increases pain transmission and intensity. Uh, truth be told, I got no idea what this all means. Um, <laughs> G proteins, the coolest proteins on the block. 
they're the real homies. Right, that's the end for that video. Um, comment down below if you do have any other questions. I'll try and get back to you. Um, I might do another video on actual treatment for tendinopathies and that treatment, you know, whether it be for knee, elbow, ankle, the concepts behind the treatment can be applied everywhere. Anyway, peace. Guy, I, I swear, you, you keep on training like that, you, you actually might get a tendinopathy. Um, that's a tendon, tendinopathy.